Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I have with me the Intel NUC. Um, I think it's called NUC 11 TNK, but we'll see it later on. It's one of the smallest pieces you could ever find. I know there are some smaller which are coming in like a thumb size, but I think in general pieces need some air, some vents, some, some way to cool them off. And this device do it exactly what it, is, what it does and just, you know, cooling the device as it needs. So I'm going to walk through with you, showing you all the, all the pods that it has, what it offers, what's have it, uh, what it has internally, and, you know, share with you my experience. So on the front, we have two, oh, sorry. <laughs> we have two USBs, uh, 3.2, I think, both of them is a SSD 10, whatever, start button, which only lights. On um, older generations, we had like a LED all over it, which I'm kind of missing, but having a device that has no lights is somewhat better. On the left side, we have, um, Cooling space, which uh, can get uh, hot hair outside. Kensington lock to lock into your cabinet or something like that. On the left side, we have, again, just vents, nothing more. But on the back, which is where the part is at, <laughs> we have a DC in, which I'm going to come to it in a little bit. A USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4, which we have 1 and 2, both of them. We have HDMI, I think it's 2.0, but I'm not sure. 2.5 gigabit port, which is really uncommon, especially on this kind of smaller devices. If you're using it, if you would like to use it as a streaming device, something like that, and you have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet at your home, you are going to enjoy it. Another USB, uh, uh, third generation, Normal USB, which I think is just um, 2.0, but normal one, but never mind. Another Thunderbolt 4 Type-C and another HDMI. I think this one is, you know, to um, it's probably being used to hang it somewhere. And I know that in some cases it comes with a bracket on the back, but this one doesn't. So uh, the device product name is S. SBN NUC 11 TNK i5000 and the model name is NUC 11 TH no, TNX TNK sorry yeah it's really small it's beautiful it's in size of your hand and by the way that's the keyboard that I'm using for it which is really a smaller than your small <laughs> keyboard but before I'm turning this on there is something you really must say about the Intel NUX, and hopefully someone in Intel sees my sees this video. We used to have Intel NUX coming with chargers with this size. You could just, you know, throw them in your bag and you could go everywhere with it. You can barely feel the weight of it. But this NUX, which has, you know, just an i5 and 8 gigs of RAM, which is really nothing, comes with this charger <laughs> now <laughs> or power adapter you can call it however you want it's bigger than the device <laughs> yeah i mean it's longer than it and it's the almost the same thick of the same you know half of it and it's really bothering me and this become really common um, in the last i don't know two to three years Intel, you should really go back to your smaller chargers. I mean, those are tiny pieces. They are not getting heated up. And again, it's just i5. This is really not cool. It has a beautiful, you know, bias icon, which is really beautiful in my experience. There are bigger nooks, and I think there are like Skull Canyon and stuff like that. They have even beautiful, much beautiful than that kind of a logo for the bias. The NUC has always been like the extremely small pieces we can see around. And let's take for example this desk that I'm using for the review. Reviews actually. 
you see how small it is? It has a really small um, footprint on it. And it just, you know, gives you a lot of space and a lot of things to do on your desk. So the main thing that's taking your space is, in a way, <laughs> the screen, the keyboard, or <laughs> the charger that is basically the, the size of the NUC itself. So let's go through the specs and what this little NUC has. So it has the uh, Intel Core i5, I usually I have the i7s, <laughs> 1135G5, G7, which usually means that it has a better graphics on board. Um, this is the 2.44 gigahertz. It has four cores, eight logical processors, and 8.0 megabytes of L third cache. It comes with eight gigas of, of byte of RAM DDR4, and they have um, three. Sorry, <laughs> 3200 and just one VIM, which mm, sometimes can make your PC a little bit slower. But because this PC for me is being used just as a streaming media, stuff like that, I don't really need the speeds of this PC. I just need to show me contact in, in 4K and that would be enough for me. It has an NVMe SSD and the model name is CT500. P2 SSD 8 and I'm going to have a check mark, benchmark of it really soon and let's check the graphics card. But if you guessed and you guessed right, this device does not have an external graphics card. It has an onboard part of the CPU and motherboard, uh, the Intel Iris XZ graphics, which you know for the basic tasks, tasks and a little bit more than that, it does more than enough. Um, but we're going to benchmark it really soon as well. So I'm running a few Windows updates because this device I haven't used it for a long time and once it's finished downloading all its updates and everything that it needs, I'm going to have benchmarks for everything that we are interested in the usual videos on this. And now for the SSD's benchmark, I'm going to run it and once it's done, I'm going to show you the numbers and that's it. So actually, as the benchmark is running, you can hear the fans and you can tell me what you think about it. But now you can hear it clearly. And the crystal disk mark has finished. So the read speeds are 2500 and write speeds are 1920, which is basically, mm, I would say a little bit lower than average, which is for me is the 3000 each one. But for the day to day stuff and just for streaming and maybe even more than that, it could be more than fine. It's good. So now for the CPU and GPU benchmarks. I'm going to run both of them. First one the CPU and then we run the GPU. I'll show you the numbers and once it's done, we'll be back. And we're back. Single core is 30, 1309 and multi-core score is 3965. Which is, if you're asking me, for an i7 it wouldn't be that great. But for an i5, those are quite nice numbers. I think it, if it would have like, I don't know, 4500, it would be better, but that would be enough. So let me show you the rest of the numbers. And now for the GPU benchmark, which is sometimes being called the compute benchmark. First, we'll do the OpenCL and then the Vulkan. So let it run and I'll be back with numbers. And we're back. So it almost got a 10,000 at the mark. And that's good, but let me show you the rest of the numbers.
And for the last benchmark, the Volcom. We'll be back in a second. And we're back again. And again, almost 10,000. 9,900, but yeah, I'll give it a 10,000. But let me show you the rest of the numbers for this benchmark. So now that we have finished with all the benchmarks and everything that, are, that needs to be checked with this little PC, I'll give you my thoughts. First of all, I think tiny PCs, no one, still no one comes to this kind of sizes in terms of mini PCs. Yeah, we have some of them from Lenovo, we have some of them from Dell, HP, everybody. But for some reason, Intel has always been the smallest has always been uh, on top of the edge when it comes to ports and uh, basically all around the package is quite good. And also, most of the Intel NUCs are coming either way, pre-built or no parts at all. So basically you have three, one, two, three, four screws to take it off and you have to access to it. So you can build your own PC with it. Really easy, very simple. Um, but still, there are downsides for this PC. And the first one is the power brick, which has become enormous for this type of a PC. Um, the second thing that I think um, has become pretty bad within, within years is it becomes boring. It became boring. We used to have LEDs. We had, we had to use, we used to have like power button at the top. It used to have like other colors, but now we have just this plain black, this um, office PC looking, and for some people it is good, and so for some people like me, um, I don't like it. I like having a PC that's looking cool, but yeah. And the third part, part which is from my experience, these PCs are not the best PCs when it comes to re uh, um, to reliability and it's again from my experience I had I think about um, I may say four Internux from this type I had from the fourth generation I had from the sixth generation the seventh and now the eleventh um, and each one of them had problems on, on its own. The first one had problems with the fans. The second one had problems with video. The third one had problems with, with videos. And I'm not sure if I'll have problems with this one. Hopefully I won't, but the upside is that if you are contacting Intel for support, usually they'll be really nice and just send you the part that you need. So example, when I had problem with my fan, they just sent me a fan, even though it was after the warranty, which is quite cool from them. But again, I, th I think it could become better within time. I hope it is. And yeah, if you can find something like that for less than, I would say, $750, something like that, you are going to enjoy it. Even if you have your own PC, even if you have your own laptop, it's just a really cool PC to have in your home. It's really light, it's really cool, you can take it everywhere. You have every port that you can ever need. And by the way, the review, I, I, this review wasn't on the HDMI, it was on the Thunderbolt, so yeah, it works. Um, but yeah, okay, so thank you for watching, and sorry for my English on, on this video, it's just that um, I had a corona last month, and that's why I didn't upload many videos. And yeah, it's just, um, it has influence on my talk and I'm trying to get over it, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching and stay tuned because we have a lot of videos coming out.